Hey everybody, it's ML7 and today I'm going to answer a question that has sparked debates in the community for years. Who's the hardest support to rank up with? In this video, I'll do a hierarchy of supports based on three main categories. Easiest and hardest to rank up with if you have trained your aim, easiest and hardest to rank up with if you haven't trained your aim, and a simulation category where you're playing each hero perfectly. For this video, I've looked at my stats from all my educational rank to gm content on supports and saw some interesting stuff. Before we jump into it, please take these stats with a grain of salt as I was obviously better at some supports than others when I did this series and I've also adapted my gameplay to emulate how players play at a certain rating. For example, I didn't flank with Ana 24-7, so win rate and total games are not that important. But if I'm honest, there were some times in Masters when I tried my absolute best to win with some heroes and even though I knew in theory what to do, in practice it took me some time to get used to it. Now. Let's dive into this. Here are the stats. The amount of games it took me to go from unranked to GM. As we can see, the longest it took me was Mercy at 187 games, which was 39 hours of playtime. And the fastest one was the Niara at only 52 games or roughly 10 hours of playtime. I've had the highest win rate on Baptiste and the lowest on Mercy, the lowest deaths on Ana, which was very surprising, while the highest being on Brig. I remember feeding a lot. Moira is number one in three tables. I've had the highest eliminations, healing and hero damage with her from all of the supports. Obviously, Mercy is going to be the last one in eliminations and damage and heroes like Lucio and Breg are usually somewhere in the middle of the tables. Pretty interesting stuff if you ask me. The key to getting 2GM on support is to play heroes that have the highest kill potential. The role is called support, not healer. Follow me a bit on this. The resources that a support can give their team are the following. Kills, heals, buffs for allies, speed boost, nano boost, etc. Debuffs for the enemy team, such as Discord Orb, and CCs, stuns, slows, poops, and so on. Now, even if your allies get all of the resources possible, they might not know how to use them efficiently. If you picture how an Overwatch League support player would play in your silver games, you'd probably be thinking that they would be getting a lot of kills. This is because even if they'd have 100% accuracy healing with Ana and give all of the resources to their team, they might still lose the game because their team might not know how much of an advantage that support gives them compared to the enemy supports. Throughout the years, I've watched a ton of VOD reviews from my community and I've seen some insane players stuck in low ratings that are amazing at supporting their allies but trust their team too much. I'm not saying to not support your team, I'm just saying that sometimes you've got to take matters into your own hands. Of course, this changes the higher you climb. This is why this playstyle will not work for you in pro play because there, if one team gets more utility resources than the other team, they can speculate that advantage and win the game. But now for the juicy part. Who's the easiest and the hardest support to rank up with? To establish this, I've divided the player base into two main categories. Support players that have trained the game, I'm talking about the FPS players that came to play Overwatch and have a lot of hours practicing the game, and support players that haven't trained the game, I'm talking about new players to the FPS genre or new players to gaming in general. There is also a third category which is more of a perfect scenario kind of thing, which is unrealistic, but I wanted to include it just for the sake of the argument. The reason why I did this segmentation is because it will be faster for someone that has aim integrated into their gaming skills to play aim dependent characters as opposed to someone that doesn't. Overwatch is an FPS and as discussed earlier, you will climb faster if you kill the enemy. But as a thought, I do think that players that don't rely on aim play more strategically and have better game sense. This means that as a brain and not aim player, you will be able to speculate the weaknesses in strategy that such players display. Easiest to hardest support to rank up with for players that have trained their aim. Zenyatta is the easiest one to rank up with if you have aim because, in my opinion, he has the highest kill potential. You don't need that much healing if you do a lot of killing. If your teammates complain about the lack of heal, then maybe your other support will go main healer. If they don't, then you have to rely on getting kills in the fights fast. One easy way to do this is by flanking with him, something that's often overlooked by low-ranked Zenyatta players. 
Flanking is easier with Zen than with other heroes because he doesn't make any footsteps, so you can get close to the enemy without them even knowing you are dead, which will lead to some juicy kills. The problem that players have in low ranks with Zenyatta is that their team thinks that they are low on heals so they will lose. I recommend avoiding arguing with your teammates on this because there is this concept that winning games in Overwatch requires a ton of healing for tanks and DPSs to pop off, when in reality it doesn't. Avoid conflict and just play. If you trust yourself, you will land your shots and you will win easy. If Zenyatta requires a lot of confidence to play and he seems a bit hard, then maybe Baptiste is the pick for you. He does a ton of healing so your team won't complain while also being able to dish out insane damage. He also has Exo Boots which allow him to reposition easy in fights and, as we know, he who has the high ground has the advantage. Here are the reasons why I haven't put him higher up. You might fall into the trap of healing your team a little bit too much with him and you have damage fall off so your pick potential before fights is limited. Compared to Zenyatta who can get initial picks with his orb volley. Same as Baptiste, Ana is able to do a lot of healing to her allies and a lot of damage to the enemies, but she has one downside. Her abilities are skill shots and you might need some time to get used to them. She can get kills from long, medium and short range and she can play from every position she wants, but if you have bad cooldown management, no matter how good you are with your aim, you will die a lot as a granny and you will need assistance from your team to stay alive. If you get used to Lucio's unique wall guiding mechanic and get good at hitting your shots, then going full guided Lucio mode will result in you winning a ton of games. Think of him as a more mobile Zenyatta or a Genji who doesn't need healing but provides healing. Play him like an assassin and if you trust your team, you can always default to being a team player and protecting them. Why he's in 4th place is because even if you have all the aim in the world, getting used to his kit takes some big time investment but if you do it, you won't regret it. Moira falls into 5th place due to the lack of burst damage. You will see that you will reach a plateau in Masters because you won't be able to pick off enemies one by one as they start to group up. She does the most healing and most damage on average out of all of the supports but the lack of utility she provides means that even if you have the highest APM in the world, you will still struggle to win. Breg is insane if the enemies want to get close to her team. But if they play with ranged heroes, then playing Breg will be hugged. Experienced players will get value out of her kit, but considering how she specializes in punishing the mistakes of enemies, what happens if she isn't in range of them? You'll say that she must play aggressive and get close to the enemy and I agree with you, but every Breg player knows that there's a fine line between being an unkillable beast and feeding 24-7 when you're aggro, and that line takes a long time to understand. After a long reflection, I have concluded that Mercy is the hardest support to rank up with if you have trained your aim. Here are my reasons. Overall, she has the lowest stats from all the tables. Her kill potential is the lowest. I recommend going DPS Mercy and Valkyrie as much as you can. You are limited by how well your team plays. I'm sure there are a ton of amazing Mercy players who aren't GM, but if you'd put them in a high ranked game and Mercy would be the meta support, they would do pretty well. Her mechanics are neglected and pushed into a narrative that they are easy to do, but if I'm honest, it's hard to get used to every single variation of her movement tricks. Super jump is just the start of them, and even that is one of the movement tricks that I still haven't completely mastered yet. This being said, it's not that easy to just say, I'm playing Mercy and I know how to stay alive a lot, but my teammates are holding me back. Recognizing when to go for risky races, who to damage boost, when to make the enemies shoot you without dying, when to tempo valk and so on takes a ton of practice. Easiest to hardest support to rank up with for players that have not trained the game. Easy tier. Baptiste and Moira. Baptiste and Moira are both heroes that do a ton of damage and heal and even if you don't have good aim, you can still get by with them very easily as it's easy to shoot shields and tanks with Baptiste and it's easy to track with Moira. Medium tier. Breg and Ana. If you recognize how you should play Breg in every team comp, then you will see that she pays dividends. With Ana, even if you don't have good aim, you can still stay very close to your team and do one scope shots. As long as you save the sleep diet for self protection, use the nade defensively, and sometimes offensively if you feel confident you can land an aggressive grenade and have good nano targets, you'll be fine. Hard tier Lucio, Zenyatta, and Mercy. 
Playing a passive Lucio means that your team needs to capitalize on your speed boosts, which usually don't happen unless everybody's on the same page. Additionally, if you play him to peel, then you're better off playing Brig. She's easier and does a lot more. A Zenyara who doesn't land their shots means they are only contributing to the fight by healing for a little bit, spamming shields and applying Discord Orb. Teammates focusing the discarded target doesn't always happen and to add to all of this, if you have bad positioning and bad aim, you'll be a very easy target to kill. In my opinion, Mux is still the worst hero to rank up with because of the limitations that I've explained earlier in the previous category. Before we go deeper into this, I just want to be clear. This support ranking is made not taking into consideration any meta. If for example the meta means that you have to play Mercy Ash or Mercy Farah and there are only a few ways to counter that, then Mercy becomes a hard carry for her team as she is indispensable to that team comp. Now let's dive into a hypothetical scenario, one in which you're an expert at playing every support. Which hero would be the easiest and which hero would be the hardest to rank up with? Let's say that you have mastered every mechanic on every support hero and you have amazing aim and game sense. You are the Giga Chat support player. This is the case that takes into consideration the maximum value that you can get out of every support hero. We'll go from easiest to hardest to rank up with as before. Coming in as the easiest support to rank up with, it's Baptiste. If you play Baptiste optimally, then climbing with him will be the easiest. Here's a list of reasons. He works in almost all team compositions. Your team can't complain that you lack healing, damage or shield spam. Immortality field is one of the strongest abilities in the game. You can protect yourself easily with him. You can reposition yourself. You can get high ground. You can heal multiple people at once. And the list can go on and on and on. He has to be, in my opinion, the easiest support to rank up with. The second place goes to Lucio. Spawn camping, 1v1ing, environmental kills, forcing points. A good rated Lucio is a menace to deal with, as he usually isn't a priority for the enemy team to focus because he's hard to catch, an insane Lucio player will be able to easily win games by literally playing support like an assassin. The problem is that their team might complain about them not having enough help in the fight, but if you consistently get kills and get the enemy's attention onto you, even by forcing objectives, then your team will will write Lucio death. The whole idea to him is to make the enemy start the fight either by down one member because you kill someone early or to make the enemies focus their attention onto you thus being in a 1 vs 2 situation at least and your team having the numerical advantage in the main fight. If you can't zoom zoom across the map with ease then there are definitely harder carries. Tons of damage, insane positioning, proper transcendence usage, amazing flanks all sound like a dream, but there's one thing I haven't mentioned, your team crying for heals. This is why Zenyara is the third easiest support to rank up with. Sometimes there are some maps and some team comps where no matter how cracked you are, you can't win games because you can't flank that easily or can't 1v3, or even if you can't do that, your team might just not want to play the game because they don't have enough heals. Why I think Lucio works better is because he can force objectives way better and he can also flank easier, even if not as deadly as Zenyara. The core of the game is to complete the objective of the map, and you can do that by not necessarily getting kills, which is something hard for you to do as Zen. The fourth place I have to give to Ana. Almost everybody loves having an Ana in their team. She can open team fights with a big nade or sleep dart and getting nanoed feels amazing. She can play from every range and although she doesn't have a lot of damage, she has big kill potential thanks to her high burst damage. The problems she has, even if played optimally, are she doesn't have shield spam, there are heroes that can counter her abilities such as D.Va and Sigma and you can die easily if you're not smart enough with your positioning and ability usage so she kind of needs help. Even in suboptimal team compositions, a brick that doesn't die is annoying. She does a lot of damage and healing and if played right she is literally 3 goals in 1, a tank, a DPS and a support. Good brick players are scary and hard to punish so respect the mace to the face. This is why Brick takes the number 5 spot. The number 6 spot goes to... Mercy. 
If you're a master at staying alive, you know when to go aggro and you can recognize teammates that can get maximum value out of your damage boost, even if it's not the optimal target. For example, damage boosting a Reinhardt sometimes instead of an Ash who doesn't hit a lot. Then you can carry with Mercy. Mercies that always stay alive are incredibly difficult to play against, but even then, she can't do everything. If you're playing with someone that plays a good pocketing hero, like Faga, Ash, Hanzo, Soldier, and Echo, and they play their hero well, then your carry potential increases a ton, because you enable them to roll the enemies and you can fix your team's mistakes by resting them, but that's not always the case. The hardest support to rank up with if played perfectly is... Drumroll... Moira. No matter how insane you are at Moira, sometimes in Overwatch you just need to do more than healing and damage. Your team will be annoyed if you're going in full DPS Moira in the backline and you can't offer proper peel. You will find yourself overhealing a lot and the damage that you do to the enemies, if you can't win one versus ones, will mostly result in you feeding them ult charge. I feel like the key to carry with her is to force objectives and fade away to safety when the enemies go for you, but sometimes that's hard to do. This is why she has to take the last place in carry potential. If I'm honest, I never seen anyone say Moira carry apart from when she went DPS mode and people just ignored her or when the enemies were already low HP. If the enemies don't ignore you and try to fight you, what can you do? Before everybody loses their minds, a special mention. Moira is the hardest support to rank up with because the ultimate goal is usually Grand Master. If you play her perfectly, you will plateau in Masters, where more utility is needed for your team. Up until there, you will see great results if you play her. So, if you're really good at every support, Mercy is the hardest one to rank up with until Masters, and from Masters, it's Moira, in my opinion. Taking into account the general skill level of the average Overwatch player and how the game is played at every rank, the hardest support to rank up with will usually be Mercy, while the easiest one will be Baptist. I hope you found this video useful and good luck in your ranked journey! If you want to learn how to play support, check out my Unranked to GM educational series on every support. Links are in the description. For a breakdown of each episode of this series, you can join my Discord server and search for the channel Unranked to GM series where you will find the summary of each episode. Please let me know in the comments who do you think is the easiest and who's the hardest support to rank up with. I'm curious to see how you all feel and see if we are on the same page or not. I hope you've enjoyed the video, stay safe, ML7 out.